On January the 5th, 2023, after Benedict XVI's funeral, Bishop Jose Ignacio Munilla spoke to us about the legacy of the Pope Emeritus. The Bishop of Alicante, Spain, shared with us some of his anecdotes about Benedict, and he was even moved as he remembered Benedict XVI's last words before he died. Excellency, thank you so much for being with us here today. We just celebrated Benedict XVI's funeral. What was your impression of the funeral presided over by Pope Francis? The truth is that I gave thanks to God for being in this place on such a historic and emblematic day like this one. The words the Pope focused on in his homily, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. I use them in my prayer to say, Father, I place in your hands he who was a shadow of your paternity. Because Benedict XVI and so many other fathers in the faith that God has given us, like Saint Joseph and others, have been like the shadow of God the Father. God the Father, through the paternity of many people, you have a shadow in this world. Benedict's last words before dying were, Lord, I love you. How do you interpret those words? Well, the truth is that they brought out some tears in me when I received that piece of news. That his last words were those, it moved me. Why? Well, because I think that in the end we're going back to St. John chapter 21. And then the Lord says to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? And in the end, we remember what St. John of the Cross said, in the evening of life, we will be judged on love alone. So I think that I'm convinced that Benedict XVI passed that exam of love with a magna cum laude because his entire life's motor was love. He was a person that God gifted with exceptional intellectual gifts, but his intellectual gifts, you see, were always put at the service of a truth united to love. Remember, caritas in veritate, his encyclical, which could also be called veritas in caritate. Charity and truth are indissoluble. I believe it is a heresy of our time, and I've repeated this often and in many forms, that the heresy of our time is precisely the counterposition of truth and charity, as if Benedict XVI were the Pope of truth, but not of charity. For that, that the theologian Pope, the Pope of the faith, would die saying, Lord, I love you, I think is the apex that explains everything to us. Jesus Christ is the truth, and Jesus Christ is love, and those of us that serve him must make ourselves seen, bearing witness to that conjunction of truth and charity, that Christ is shown in our lives like in Benedict XVI. And could you tell us some personal anecdotes that you have with the Pope Emeritus? Well, the truth is that I had the gift of being in charge of the pastoral care for young people in Spain in those years during which the World Youth Day was celebrated in Spain. There in Madrid, at Cuatro Vientos, I can bear witness that in the encounters I had for the organization of the World Youth Day, I saw someone who was truly excited that the young people might encounter Jesus Christ. For example, it must be said that Benedict the 16th will pass into history for having added to the World Youth Days. He had already done it in Cologne the first time, recently elected. He will go down in history for having added something good to the World Youth Days that wasn't in the first model that St. John Paul II came up with. And what was it? Well, exposing the blessed sacrament for the adoration of all of that immense multitude. That is, he was the one who introduced Eucharistic adoration to the youth gatherings. And nowadays, it is almost something very normal. But remember, Benedict XVI introduced it, and he did it in his first World Youth Day in Cologne. So that at those that followed like the one I experienced, like that which we had in Madrid at Cuatro Vientos, it was a given. And there, we experienced before a million young people the exposition of the Most Holy in the midst of an incredible storm. That night, with that incredible storm, there was a silence. When the rain and the thunder were quiet, only Jesus Christ was there, the protector. It was unforgettable. I think that it was the pivotal moment of the wager Benedict XVI made to place Jesus Christ in the Eucharist at the center of the life of the Church.